Hurricane Lee's rapid intensification is underway. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about Lee and now newly formed Tropical Depression 14 plus later on. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, there has been a huge update to the National Hurricane Center's intensity forecast when it comes to Lee passing north of the Caribbean. We're going to break all that down. If you do want to stay updated on Lee in all things weather, especially as we venture through the peak of hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you find this content valuable or helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so here we go. Category 2 Hurricane Lee as of the 11 o'clock advisory. Rapid intensification underway. If you remember, 5 a.m., we had an 80-mile-per-hour storm. Now we have a 105-mile-per-hour storm. Here's what's going on, and we're going to take a closer look at the satellite in just one second, but well-defined eye all of a sudden popping out. And I want to show you these two purple little dots that pop up here right on the eye wall those are those dueling hot towers those cumulonimbus towers that is a telltale sign a textbook sign that this thing is exploding in intensity and again the pressure down as well 983 millibars starting tonight we're going to be able to really get good data hurricane hunter missions into lee begin and then those will continue of course through the life of this thing and all the way through the weekend here is the major update by the National Hurricane Center. Not much has changed in the track. That is the great news about it. But look at what you see on your screen here. We now have officially a Category 5 storm forecast by the Hurricane Center as early as Friday night. Look at this, 160 mile per hour Category 5. And they even mentioned in their kind of description here that that is kind of like right in the middle of guidance. We talked about this in previous videos that some of the hurricane models and global models for that matter explode this thing further and get this to potentially higher than 160 mile per hour category 5 storm so that is something that we are going to be watching closely over the next couple of days again the good news is the great news is that we can just kind of be awe inspired by the weather here at least over the next few days as this is likely going to stay to the northeast of the caribbean islands north of puerto rico we may be able to get low-end tropical storm impacts in some of the outer bands here but by and large the destructive part of this storm should remain northeast of the caribbean this has been well modeled there's high confidence in this to happen so again that is the best news that i can give you Look at this. Leah's quickly becoming a monster. And you can see here what's going on. Those kind of cumulonimbus clouds. See how it wraps around the center? That is what a tropical system wants to do. It fires up those storms and then it wraps it around the center. And then once that kind of wrapping is complete, you see it there. That is when it starts to intensify and in this case really explode in intensity you can kind of see down in there it's still working on clearing out the eye a little bit you get that sinking air in the eye that's why it's calm in the eye and once that happens that's when you can see that really really cool hurricane hunter video of the stadium effect as it's known when those planes fly in there it's pretty much all clear and it looks like it's a stadium seating so that's what we are likely going to be seeing a lot of over the next couple of days but just an extremely impressive visible satellite imagery and something that has been well forecast the intensity forecast has been spot on so far uh, from the hurricane center with their aggressive initial forecast getting this to be a strong category four right out of the gate and now again forecast to become a category five water vapor imagery also shows this in detail uh, if you remember in yesterday's video on september 6 we were looking at that we did have good outflow channels on this storm good as in good for the storm breathing well so when i say good again i'm not wishing this on anybody and again in the short term this is not going to impact land um but now we see it breathing very healthy on all sides we had some wind shear back here that has since relaxed and really has allowed this thing to take off so that's one of the things that we look for in forecasting rapid intensification of course the water temperature forget about that it's record hot but how much wind shear is going to be around and how much ventilation is the system going to have it needs to kind of evacuate all of that air up and out of the system which is doing as part of its heat engine now to where this thing is going here are the latest computer models and again the good news is is that we have 
great agreement in the modeling, even the far southern outliers at the center, that the core of this thing, the destructive nature of this storm will stay away from the Caribbean island. So again, that is great news. We're still watching for the potential again for a few of these outer bands or feeder bands once we get north of the Caribbean to give us some heavier thunderstorms in the mix. But the best news I can give you to my friends in the Caribbean, uh, this is not coming here. The next round up of course is going to be the Turks and Caicos and certainly still some very good agreement that this thing lifts to the northeast of the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. We are still cautiously watching though, cautiously optimistic that this does turn before it gets to the Turks and Caicos. I want to show you the thing that I like to show you a lot of on this channel, the ensembles. We're going to get good Hurricane Hunter data in there, and still that convoluted pattern upstream in North America is going to be the end-all, be-all in determining when this thing turns. But here are the European ensembles. Different conditions are put into the model, the 51 members of it, to give us an idea when we don't have a good range of data because of course we're looking at things seven to ten days in the future so when we tweak the initial conditions a little bit we get that wider range of outcomes and i'm still happy to say that even these southern outliers here of the europe of the european ensembles get it close to the turks and caicos we would be impacted by maybe low-end hurricane if we had the center down in here so this is something we still need to watch but you clearly see here the bulk of its members bend it away now we're going to be watching for Bermuda very closely because uh, here is Bermuda right through here. And we do have a lot of these members getting close. The pink color here represents a very intense storm. This is like where it would be Cat 4, Cat 5 intensity. But then notice how it goes yellow. If you remember Hurricane Franklin was in the range up here in the realm, it really cooled down the water. So once it starts to get up here... It's going to weaken considerably. Still, though, going to have to pay attention for us in the Turks and Caicos, into Bermuda, and then maybe, again, of course, into uh, the Canadian Maritimes, still watching into the Northeast. Let me kind of reposition this. You see that far down the line, the European ensembles try to get it close to New England. Again, this is like 10 days. This is on the 16th or 17th of September. So a lot is going to change here, but it does bring a system close to New England and the Canadian Maritimes as it lifts north. That is going to be so uncertain, though, because of how crazy the steering pattern is. There's a lot of dips in the jet stream that comes over North America, Canada, the United States, that is eventually and going to be the determining factor of where this thing, when this thing turns north, and then where it goes after it makes that turn. But, again, still cautiously optimistic for the southeast that it's not coming here, and that it's not coming for us in the mid-Atlantic. Again, just watching way, way down the road, and we're going to get better data, again, from the hurricane hunters starting uh, Thursday evening, and then really as we move to the weekend, we get a better sampling of that system the the wavy jet stream as it works over land so here is the european model and i kind of want to show this for my friends in the caribbean and the turks and caicos and just how this could play out and again i want to caution this is one model it's not a good idea to look at just one model but it's in the range of the hurricane models and it's in the range of the ensembles that we look at so that's why i want to show it to you just to kind of give you the, the just to show you what our impacts could be. And you see here, to the northeast leeward islands, All Saints, and then into the Virgin Islands, we're looking okay. Just a few outer bands could be gnarly at times, but notice, this is what we want to avoid here. The darker yellow and orange and dark green, that is the core of the system. So you see we could have feeder bands coming through Puerto Rico and into the Virgin Islands, but the core is staying up here. There's 11 o'clock on Monday morning, and again, that is the very good agreement. Now, according to the Euro, this is where we start to see things diverge. Does it turn north way ahead of the Turks and Caicos? That is still in question. So I know we have a lot of people watching from the Turks and Caicos. I just want to be clear about that, that we do need to keep on watching for you guys. The European, though, is your friend. It wants to bend it up here. The waves are going to be crazy on the northern side of Hispaniola and uh, Puerto Rico and parts of the Virgin Islands and Leeward Islands. Also for us in the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, likely for Florida as well. But, and the European rendition here, it bends and it does not have direct contact 
with the Turks and Caicos. We are watching that closely, but again, that is some good news uh, for us, relatively speaking. This is the tropical egg I like to show, and it just has the wind field here. So we're looking for that yellow shaded area for winds of tropical storm force. And you see, at least at this point, they are still very tightly packed. So this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, This where this is drawn here. It keeps tropical storm force winds even sustained northeast of the island. Could we have gusts in some of those feeder bands that kind of roll up? Oh, yeah. We could have some nasty thunderstorms coming through at times. But, again, nobody wants this storm. Nobody wants this storm to affect anybody. And that is, you know, the best news that I can give, at least in the short term. There is very high confidence that this thing is staying northeast of the Caribbean. The uncertainty comes a little bit more for the Turks and Caicos. And then certainly for the Mid-Atlantic and North, way down the line. That's 7 to 10 days out uh, when it comes in that part. Here's what's steering thing, uh, this thing. Here's what's steering Lee. And you see that abrupt turn to the north there. Big chunk of high pressure here. But there's that dip in the jet stream working its way through the United States and southern Canada by the time we get to the middle and latter stages of next week. So by Thursday, this dip is trying to force Lee to the north up and near the eastern seaboard. Best case scenario, of course, would this area of high pressure then pivot back out to the North Atlantic and then let this thing ride away from the Canadian Maritimes. You see this little nub here that orange color there that is high pressure trying to build back in that's why we're a little concerned here with still some uncertainty for the mid-atlantic and then again this is seven to ten days out for the for new england and the canadian maritimes but we want this little nub to inch further back into the north atlantic so that this thing can pass by safely uh bermuda the eastern seaboard and the Canadian Maritimes. That is something that remains to be seen. No one knows what's going to happen with that because we need to get that wavy jet stream sampled better. We need to get that into the United States upper air network with the balloon launches and stuff. Models will come into closer agreement, I think, as to how the jet stream is going to bend and how it's going to impact that surface high pressure as we get towards the weekend and early next week. So again, in the short term, the uncertainty is right down in here. But I'm cautiously optimistic, again, for the Turks and Caicos. We are watching that closely for you guys. I mentioned earlier in the video that we did have a new tropical depression develop. This is 14. This is giving us some inclement weather around the Cabo Verde Islands. This one is also likely going to strengthen into a tropical storm and then eventually a hurricane as it plays with the fish out here. So that is also some good news, but expected to, be, to at least in the next five days, get towards a category one storm maybe a little bit stronger as it passes to the west of the azores you kind of see them right above the banner where it says 14 um but it's something we're going to watch as it kind of drifts into the north atlantic this one should not impact land other than those scattered thunderstorms that are dealing with uh the cabo verde islands are dealing with um in the short term when it comes to tropical depression 14. Alrighty, guys, hopefully this is just going to remain something that we are in awe of when I'm talking about Hurricane Lee at this present time. We're going to watch that closely over the next few days as, again, some uncertainty still remains on when this thing turns and then its long time track. I will say that Lee will get weaker as it lifts north. Again, that's courtesy of tropical of what was Hurricane Franklin in the short term, but right now it has free reign to go gangbusters and rapidly intensify into a strong Category 5 hurricane, potentially a historic hurricane, especially for where it's located uh, in the uh, central and western Atlantic. So something we're going to watch through the weekend, early next week, and beyond. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on the rest of hurricane season, hopefully no one else is impacted. Hit subscribe, and of course, beyond hurricane season, we're still going to be here tracking the crazy weather events of the Caribbean, the United States, Canada, all of the above. Hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.